players on top. That's kind of what we were thinking was going to end up happening. Look at Sebastian, exactly. though, on the left. He's got oh. all the things. We're going to see this answer coming in here pretty soon. We want to make sure that we are watching the chat. This is neck and neck here, guys. Sebastian really came up quick. 606 from Sebastian. That is not correct. 606. That is not correct. Oh, we and we got Gray coming in. Gray coming in with an answer. 577 or 578. That is not correct. That is not right. correct. So, wow, two answers came in really, really close. And now things get interesting because now both of our runners need to look at their work. Both of our runners need to examine where things maybe went wrong. They need to examine some of their dimensioning. But, wow, there's... Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another CAD vs. CAD tournament highlight. One of the more common questions we get is, how did these guys get so fast? And I can say that many of the competitors that we see in this tournament are regular members on our website, TooTallToby.com. On this website, you can sign up for our Practice Models app, where you'll find over 200 2D to 3D practice models, very similar to what we see here in the tournament. So if you want to get fast enough to enter the next CAD vs. CAD tournament, be sure to sign up over at TooTallToby.com. Get started on your practice models journey. And of course, be sure to like this video. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought about the battle and what you thought about this model. Guys, the Wheel of Fate has spoken. And the model that we're going to be seeing here in this challenge is going to be model number 16. And I got a feeling this is going to be a good one. While we're getting that, while the production team is getting that ready, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about these runners. So, yeah, Sebastian started using Katia when he was 14 years old back in 2011, which uh, is when I graduated high school. So, great year. Uh, <laughs> His biggest fear is click OK to terminate. I can solve a Rubik's Cube in 27 seconds. That's impressive. That's uh, and he runs a CAD automation startup focused on streamlining engineering workflows. So awesome, awesome. Nice. I mean, anytime you can streamline workflows, you're going to be way more productive. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and Gray, he loves his girlfriend, Maria. It's awesome. Nice. Shout out to all the, the spouses and partners and wives and everybody out there keeping us, letting us play around on the internet for a couple hours. Nice, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and he started using SolidWorks in 2018. Uh, the main direction of his work is body products made out of sheet metal. So very cool. Uh, sheet metal. He's hoping for some sheet metal on here. Yeah. So. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see what, what the wheel do. delivers. Yep. Well, that is very cool. One of my favorite things about this tournament is getting to learn a little bit more about these runners. But guys, the time for friendliness is over. We've been waiting all day for this matchup. Our number two seed versus our number three seed. We've got Sebastian from Germany, our number three seed running Katia, going up against Gray from Russia, our number two seed running SolidWorks. And guys, the Wheel of Fate has spoken and the Wheel of Fate has delivered a tier six model. Ooh. This <laughs> CAD versus CAD battle in our semifinals begins in three two one go what is the mass of this multi-body part or assembly in xxx grams the tolerance is plus or minus two grams guys this is a tier six model you can see that all the wires are diameter six millimeters and there are seven cross wires and one 252 od diameter ring wire both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture of the print both of our runners are deciding how to approach this thing, and it looks like Gray has already gotten in there and drawn a circle here on the top of the model, and it looks like Sebastian may be thinking about how he's going to approach this thing, but it looks like Gray is wasting no time. He's getting in there. He's created his circle on the outside using a construction line, and now he's creating a revolve using that inner circle or possibly a sweep. I guess he did it as a sweep using that inner circle. That was very, very smart to get that OD correct. I knew that was going to be a little bit tricky and wow, wow, wow. And Jay Miles in the chat says, I have one of these for my air fryer. <laughs> right? I was thinking barbecue grill. Like it's, it's definitely, I know I'm going to have a student that's going to want to make this now this year too. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. This is a fun, fun model. Our first tier oh, yeah. six model of the tournament. And 
wow, wow, wow. You can imagine that this thing is going to have to be approached in phases. I think the first phase is going to be to create that outer ring. And it looks like both of our runners agree. And both of our runners have created that outer ring. And now Gray moving on to the second phase of this model. He's trying to figure out what's going to be the best for the spacing on this thing. One of the things that often happens in manufacturing is you receive a drawing like this and it has the spacing between the wires, not the center to center, but the spacing yep. between. And that makes things a little bit complicated if you're not paying attention. That's definitely one of the things we run into in fab with the kids is they're like, I said, how'd you measure it? And they're like, oh, it was 25. And I was like, well, it's, you got to have the, you know, the thickness of the, the tube. And they're like, did you go center to center? You go inside to inside, outside to outside. Did you go diagonals, right? Oh, like we talked about like how TVs are measured and stuff. It's, yeah. it's kind of crazy. So yeah, very important, right? If you use the wrong one, then it's not going to fit. You're going to be making we can all me We can all measure the same thing five different ways and all be right. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. So we see Gray here modeling this thing up uh, and and creating it using uh, uh, SolidWorks sketching there, creating that sketch on the side. We see in the meantime, Sebastian on the left using Katia, moving into that second phase, creating those, those crossbars. Looks like he was able to get those crossbars in place first, but now it looks like maybe he's struggling a little bit to get them located. So very interesting here. I was I thought it was really interesting how Gray decided just to rip through there with those planes to begin with. We're gonna see if that ends up paying off. Right, yeah. I think I think it looks like Sebastian did a pattern of some sort. And like a skip instance or something is kind of what it looked like. Yeah, maybe modeled one and did a pattern. Uh, that's that's an interesting approach as well. And, and uh -huh. I can definitely see how that could be, uh, you know, that, that could be beneficial as well. You notice it looks like both of them are kind of making that original uh, that original wire oversized, that original cross wire oversized. So I wonder if they're if they're thinking about taking kind of like a manufacturing approach to mm -hmm. get rid of the extra. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely, and it's it's. I think it's different because it's. I mean, and I, I teach welding, so every other part that you have, typically these bars, because you're talking about like cast parts or right. This one is a bunch of bars that are going to be really crappily spot welded <laughs> exactly um but so they're it's they're all that tangent relationship they have to sit on top like they're doing so it's it's a really cool but really challenging model so i know metab earlier in the chat was saying this is disastrous and i think he's glad that the wheel didn't pick this one for him so <laughs> yeah yeah it was it just quite the quite the ramp up from the tier four models that we were seeing in yeah. the first couple of battles and that's that's how the wheel can be So now we see Gray kind of moving on. To, actually, both of our runners, both Gray and Sebastian, kind of moving on to this third phase of the of the challenge, which is how do you get those little feet that are sticking down? There's four of those little mm -hmm. feet that are sticking down on this grill uh, to kind of elevate it. And so how do you get those feet in place? Do you cut away the, the extra geometry? It looks like Sebastian has decided, or Gray, excuse me, on the right, Gray has decided to kind of sketch the whole thing, starting starting from the middle and working out. Uh, how do you get those fillets in place? How do you get the geometry to all be locked down? So this is all very important when it comes to calculating the correct mass and uh, really, really interesting challenge here. It definitely a challenge that, that you would break up into multiple phases and you kind of mm -hmm. think through like, I'm going to do phase one, phase two, phase three. And I feel like they're kind of on that. They're both on that third phase now, figuring, figuring out how to get those feet in place. Yeah, no, for me personally, outside of a speed modeling one, I think I would do this like Part Studio One would be the 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 simple <laughs> uh, mm. bar, the crossbar, right? And then yep. do some variations, and then number. Then I'd, I'd apply everything in an assembly to figure out kind of how I'd want things. But I would draw it all separate. But obviously, it doesn't work as fast in the speed modeling <laughs> world. So yeah. So this is really this is really they're really neck and neck here. We see that uh, it looks like Gray on the right has gotten that oh, okay. solid geometry in place for that shape, but we see that Sebastian is right right behind him, hot on his mm -hmm. heels, and uh, certainly this might be one that just comes down to whether or not somebody makes a mistake and opens the door for the other runner. Look at Sebastian on the left there, has that foot in place, uh, but we see Gray has gone through, has used the cut there to kind of clean up those wires on top. That's kind of what we were thinking was going to end up happening. Look at Sebastian exactly. though on the left. He's got oh. all the things. We're going to see this answer coming in here pretty soon. We want to make sure that we are watching the chat. This is neck and neck here, guys. Sebastian really came up quick. 606 from Sebastian, that is not correct. 606, that is not correct. And we and got Gray coming in. Gray coming in with an answer, 577 or 578. That is not correct. That is not right. correct. 
So, wow, two answers came in really, really close. And now things get interesting because now both of our runners need to look at their work. Both of our runners need to examine where things maybe went wrong. They need to examine some of their dimensioning. But wow, those answers, all of a sudden, you know, we were looking at it. And yeah. wow, wow, now it comes down to, dang, who can troubleshoot faster? So both of those runners really came in quickly with those initial answers. They both came in very close to one another with those initial answers. Aaron C says, this is where the good is separated from the great. We now need to go through and troubleshoot our model and try to figure out what dimension is incorrect? Look at, uh, you can see there that uh, uh, Gray is using some uh, just kind of on-screen dimensions to try to figure out what's going on. Ate asking for the Clock of Doom. So the Clock of Doom doesn't come into play until someone has has uh, bounced out, basically. If someone answers in wrong answer, incorrectly yeah. twice, that's when the Clock of Doom will come in. But well, I got to give a shout out to both of these runners. I cannot believe how fast they were both able yeah. to get their initial answer and just get that geometry constructed. That is fantastic. If you were just doing kind of conceptual brainstorming with a customer, that's that's super fast to get that geometry constructed. Both of our runners customers, coming in with customers fairly like to see that too. Yeah, both of our both of our runners coming in with fairly close answers, uh 606 and 577, but neither of them is correct. Deathview saying there may be something that that one of them can see. Interesting, interesting, guys. I think we're coming in with another answer. We possibly. may be. This is where it gets a little bit scary because you know if you answer and it's incorrect that you're gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna. That's gonna be it. You're not gonna be able to. Uh, you're not gonna be able to revise any further. Yeah. But, you know, but you also know that it could be any moment. It's almost like a game of chicken where if your opponent yeah. decides to just like let it rip and answer, then you know they're gonna they're gonna be the ones who end up getting it. But then so. you get your clock of doom time, and I don't know if that's any better. That might be. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those yeah. stress tests. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite elements of the tournament is seeing how these runners react. And Sebastian comes in with an answer. Five, one, eight grams. And that is correct. There we go. And wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Sebastian and Gray. Oh, my gosh. This was an awesome battle. Wow, wow, wow. One point to Sebastian. You got to earn two points to move on to our finals. But Sebastian gets it right. 518 grams, plus or minus two grams. And wow, wow, wow. What a close match there from both of our runners. Guys, be sure to put a GG in the chat for our winner, Sebastian. But super impressive from both of them. Wow, 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 guys. That was... Yes, Corey, what do you think about that? Yeah. I was speechless, man. That was like just watching that workflow and just seeing how things worked. And man, they were, they were like so fractions of a second behind each other. And close. it was just amazing.